Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this restaurant app that we're building with Flutter. In the last one, we coded up this nice intro page. So now we want to hit the get started button and go to this menu page. So let me show you by jumping into the code. By the way, if you're a beginner trying to get into app development, I wrote a little handbook for people like you who have no coding experience at all. I designed the book with a complete beginner in mind, so the book starts off with the basics of programming, and then I show you all of the essential widgets and concepts for you to start building apps yourself. This is a book that I really wish I had when I first started Flutter, so yeah, I hope this helps the beginners out there. I'll have it linked below. So we left off in the last video with this intro page and so now we need to hit the get started button so let's go to our button class and i'm going to wrap this in a gesture detector and if you look at the on tap here it's going to require this function so i'm just going to grab that and we need the text for the button but let's also require the on tap Cool, so if you come back to our intro page, you should have a red squiggle on the button because we have to specify this on tap. So now with this, we want to go to the menu page. Now, we're going to use this navigator push to go to the new page, but we actually haven't defined any of the routes yet. So let's come back to the main.dart file and in the routes, let's have a intro page route. And then another one for the menu page, which we haven't created yet. So let's just do that now real quick in the pages. Cool. And then if I come back to my main.dart file, let's import what we just created. And so now when we hit the button, we can give it the route name. Cool. So let's just restart this and see if this works. So if I hit get started, yeah, we go to this thing. So. Let's go to the menu page file now and we can give it a scaffold. And let's start filling this out. So for the background, I don't really like having a completely white background. So let's go for like a light gray. And the app bar, let's have a menu icon on the top. And by the way, just for this particular design, I don't want to have a background color at all. So let's make it transparent. But you can still see that little shadow thing and that's because we can set the elevation to be zero. Cool, so let's make the icon gray and for the title, you can put whatever you want. Let's just say like Tokyo. You can put a shop name here as well if you like. Cool, so just a simple app bar. Now for the body, we're gonna have a big column and let's have a bit of a plan. So first let's have a promo banner and then we need a search bar and then a menu list and then maybe like another popular food widget. So starting with the promo banner, let's have a container and we're going to say some little message like get 32% promo. And then let's have like a redeem button. And then also let's just have an image as well. Now for the first two items here, let's wrap them in another column. And we're going to have that button that we created before. Sweet, so there it is. Now on this overall co container, let's give it the main color we had from the intro page. Now this specific color, obviously we can give it and copy and paste it to this one. But instead of doing that, it's probably a better idea to create a new folder called themes. And we're going to have another file called colors.dart. So I'm just going to save the color here. So let's call it primary color. So if you do this, then we can just say primary color. And then if we need to make any changes, we can just do it all in one place. Sweet. So let's just keep this going. Now I want some horizontal space. And the corners are really sharp, so let's make the border radius to be 20. And some padding for the inside children. And maybe some space between these two guys as well. Sweet, now for this style, for this text, I want to use that Google font from before. And maybe make it bigger and also white. And then now finally for the image, I'm going to use one of the images we brought in earlier. So let's use this one, the mini sushi. 
Now it's probably really big. Yeah, so let's change the height to be say 100. Cool, and then let's just align these, maybe space between or space evenly. Well, not sure, what do you guys think? Maybe space between. Man, I kind of want it a little bit more in, in between there. So let's change up the padding. I'm just going to separate out the vertical and the horizontal padding. Okay, that's better. Sweet, so let's continue this going. Now I'm going to space this out with a height of 25. And we're going to have a search bar. So this should be a text field. So if you just save it, you can start typing it in already. But we're going to decorate it up. So I like to have an outline border. And let's put some horizontal padding as well. Now there's a lot of versions of these borders. Like you can have a focus border, which is like when the user clicks into it. And what I want to do is I want to change the color of the border though. So on the border side, let's make the color white. And the border radius, let's make it 20 as well. I want to make it round. And so what I'm going to do is just copy this outline border and just give it to the focus border as well. And I think there's one more border we can fill out, which is the enabled border. So yeah, there we go. Now I think, I'm not sure what this very first border is for. Like if I get rid of it, yeah, no, nothing changed. Um, if anyone knows what that first border is for, then let us know. But for this one, I'm just going to specify the focused border and the enabled border. Seems good enough for now. And let's continue down this column. So another size box of 25. And now let's have a food menu, which looks like it's aligning to the middle. So let's go to the overall column and make the cross axis alignment to the start. Cool. And let's give the horizontal padding for the text. And let's make it bold. Also a bit gray, like a dark gray. And maybe make it a bit bigger. Sweet. So the next one is going to be a size box, but only a size box of 10, because we're going to display here a list of food items. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another folder called models and we're going to have a food model. So what this means is we're going to create a class and sort of have a class for what a food is going to be. Right, so each food, we're going to need the name, the price, also the image, and the rating out of five. So when we create this, we're going to require all of these fields. And let's also just have a quick getter method to access this information from outside the class. And so if you come to the top of this menu page, Cool, so we have these few items here. So for the food menu, we can now create some food. So the first one's gonna be like, like a salmon sushi and tuna. So if you start typing food, you can hit enter and we have to fill out these fields. So I'm just gonna say 21, give it the image path and rating, let's say like 4.9. We're gonna create another food called tuna. And so now that we have this menu as a list, when you come back down to our scaffold, we can now use a list view. So this will be in a expanded widget just to fill up the rest of the space. And so we're going to return a food tile, which we haven't created yet. So let's create a new component called food tile. So this is just to display in a nice format. So let's just make it real quick. Now, each food tile, we need to know what the food is, right? So let's require that. And so in the container, let's just fill out some of this decoration. So it's going to make it a light gray. And of course, I probably need to curve the corners. And in the children, we're going to have a column. So we want to display the image, the text, and also the price and the rating. So the reason why we had that food class earlier is because now we can say with any given food, we can access its image path. 
and let's give it a height of 140 and also we can say food.name just to get the name as a text. Cool, and lastly we're going to need to display the price and the rating. So for this one I'm just going to put it in a row to display the price and also let's display the rating. And before the rating I want to have like a star icon. Okay, so we're going to decorate this more a bit later on, but let's just see what we're doing first. So if you come back to the menu page, we can now import this food tile and just give it the food. So we're just going to cycle through the food menu, right? Like this item count, it does just go through however long the food menu is. Yay, there it is. Now it's a vertical scroll. So let's change the scroll to a horizontal. And let's just put some padding on here. So I want to space this out appropriately. And the food tile should have some padding. So let's have a margin. Maybe just on the left. Okay, which means, sorry, coming back to the menu page, we don't need this padding. Okay, good. So in the food tile, let's have some inner children padding though. There we go. And I probably need to cross access alignment to the start. And let's change the star to be a yellow color, which we can't really see. So let's make it like a dark yellow. Cool. And I'm just going to change the color of some of these texts just to make it look a little nicer. And the star and the rating, I'm just going to put it together, group it as a row. Because then in this overall row, we can space between and just separate it out like that. So this is looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to decorate up some of these texts, like I said. Cool, and let's just continue this on. So after another bit of space, the last thing is I'm going to have some popular food. So this is just going to be another sort of banner style. And so in a row, let's have the image. Okay, there it is. And I'm just going to have like a favorite heart. And this one is called Salmon Eggs. And the price can be, say, I don't know, $21. And we're going to need to make this access to the start. And let's also give this a frame. So for the decoration, give it a light gray. Give it some border radius. Okay, and then finally just some margin and some padding. Great, that's looking pretty good. Now I think we can have some gap between here. And then finally, let's have a maybe a heart icon. And we actually want the outline one. Yep, there we go. And finally, I'm just going to put all first three things here in a row. So that I can main access alignment and space between just to push that heart to the end. So, so far so good. Now, oh yeah, in the text field, by the way, you can actually put a nice hint text here saying like, search here, just to put something already. But it's looking pretty good so far. Um, I think we could, in the food tile, space this out properly. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Nice, so that's our menu page. So we've got this intro page, which is pretty cool. We can click get started. And now it takes us to this menu page. Now the next thing we need to do is to maybe add the items to the cart. So yeah, let's keep going. If you have any questions on what we just did, comment below, I'll try to help you out. But let's keep building this thing. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.